and welcome back. Joining us for our second conversation of the day to talk to us about International Women's Day is Ms. Anne-Marie Williams, who is representing the National Women's Commission, Commission as the Executive Director. We have Ms. Anna Williams, who is the Acting Director for the Women's Department. And of course, one of the awardees, Ms. Aisha Pollard Robinson, joining us today. Good morning, ladies. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Good. And happy International Good morning. Women's Day to you all. Thank you. And, to ladies. Thank and happy you. Women's Day to you as well. Sure. We appreciate you being here. We've been looking forward to this conversation mm -hmm. and we know that when this time of year comes around, we get to talk about a lot of the achievements we made and some of the areas that we continue <coughs> to push for. Yeah. So I want to start off with just looking at this year's theme um, and have an explanation as to uh, why this particular theme at this time. Okay, this year's theme is Empowering women in a changing world, planet 5050 by mm. 2030. Try saying, try saying that like three times. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it is premised on the whole idea of men and women's work, planet 5050, trying to make women be a part of the workforce as much as men are. Yeah. And um, the whole issue of planet 5050 by 2030, it ties in perfectly with the Sustainable Development Goals mm -hmm. by 2030, and it speaks to goal five, which is gender equality. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the situation in which globally, mm -hmm. only 50% of women of working <coughs> age are actually a part of the workforce, as opposed to 76% of men. In Belize, twice as many men work as women. We know that globally women are actually trapped in low paying jobs and when they're in low paying jobs, a lot of these jobs don't offer, if they do, they offer little social protection for women. Yeah. And so the, the call that the United Nations is making and Belize is a part of that call to get all the actors around the table to look at how we could provide economic empowerment for women. Mm -hmm. And it is part of the sustainable development goals because if, women don't get the opportunities or if women are not employed as much as men then we know the economies around the world particularly small economies like ours mm -hmm. tend to suffer yeah. and so it is imperative that we also fit a world that is adequate and that provides for women to work yeah. because all the issues of child care we, we we want women to come in the world of work but we need to fit the world so that women can be, become a part of that world and be so sustainably. Do you think that within the scope of Belize, and of course we're talking about Belize because this is where we are, is, is, it, is it changing though? Is the shift toward, uh, with, uh, for the, of the mentality where women are in the workplace, we are very present? Because for me, especially as a teaching at UB, most of my students are, are females. When you go into banks, when you go to a different workplace, it's pop heavily populated by strong women leaders, women everywhere. So is it, is it that there is a shift happening? It is changing and there's a shift. It is changing slower than we, we would like to see it because um, if you look at um, <coughs> what's happening now, from since 2010, women have been graduated yeah. almost three to one over their male counterparts sure. at our national university. And so that tells you that in about 10 to 20 years time, the dynamic will certainly change. Yeah. Is that long? Certainly very long. We have a lot of women in the workforce and they're concentrated in lower and middle management, yeah. but they still do not get the top jobs, even as we speak. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are just as or more qualified than men, mm -hmm. but we have to realize that part of the whole issue has to do with the systemic problems that we face as women. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not something that will happen overnight. Yeah. So it's something that we have to gradually work our way through. Mm -hmm. And yes, it is changing. The paradigm is shifting, shifting yeah. a little slowly. And this is why this, this theme, this area is so important because <coughs> last year we actually pledged for parity. And now part of the parity has to do with women's economic empowerment. How do we get more women to enter the workforce and stay yeah. employed as a part of sustainable development? Yeah. 
Now, let, let's shift things over to Anna for a bit, uh, talking about some of the things happening through the women's department. Now, we know uh, this time of year, many of the organizations who work with women are highlighted, and I think uh, the women's department is, is definitely an agency that continuously works to support and empower women. Let's just talk about what the picture of a Belizean woman is through the eyes of the women's department. Um, for the women's department, we are focusing, as we say, on, on economic empowerment. Um, that's one of our main focus. Um, we've just recently made a shift whereby we've combined um, our family support services unit um, that was previously under the Department of Human Services with the Women's Department. Okay. And the idea was to look at how do we strengthen that component within the Women's Department, offering um, much support to women, mm -hmm. supporting them to a point that they can be economically, empl um, some economic opportunities as well. Um, and then in addition to that, um, we've recently embarked on a project that we're working with um, through funding with OS, mm -hmm. where, we're, where we've sort of um, strengthened what we call our job readiness mm. um, program within the department. So we're <coughs> looking at a job readiness program and specifically looking at how do we empower women. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not geared specifically at employing women, but sort of giving them the skills necessary to be employable. How yeah. do we strengthen that component? Um, and so it, it's a program that runs um, for a couple, it's a two-year program, yeah. and it's intense having women um, engaging, women and family on a whole, um, but having them engaging in specific areas of job readiness. Um, as I said, basic literacy, if, if you're not able to read and write, we look at where you are and how do we support to get to a point that you're able to be able to read and write. We look at um, where um, openings are with different agencies and how do we get your skills to the level to be employed in that area that you may want to be. Um, we're also looking at, um, there, there is a study that we're doing right now through the CIF, mm -hmm. where we're looking at what job opportunities there are, what are skills training opportunities, mm -hmm. um, and specifically kind of looking at the non-traditional skills training. Because um, if we're talking about empowering women in a changing world, the world is changing, so how do we empower women and strengthen women to get into these, tradi these non-traditional areas. How do we look at women empowering them to be electricians or, or plumbers, etc., yeah. engineers yeah. that are non-traditional. So that, those are some of the areas that we're working in right now. Does it, does it include scope for women who are already in the workforce? Because I know that for a lot of women, like you mentioned, their middle management, you know, the lower end side <laughs> of the, the scale, and they don't reach that level where they become the CEO or the, or the executive director. Is it consider those kind of women who would want the, the empowerment, the, the steps that you need to, to make that you know, push over the edge? To yes, get we do there? have some of the women, in, women that are already employed, enrolled in the program, and it's basically like to strengthen what they have yeah. and get them to a point, um, as you say, where I can become a CEO or oh, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now let's shift over to one of the awardees for this year. And before I talk to Aisha, I just want you to give us the background uh, for how the uh, women awardees are selected on a yearly basis. Well, let me just say that the women's department is the, is the organization that yes, convenes yes. the meeting and the women's commission is the co-chair. So the, the outstanding women's award has been a mainstay mm -hmm. of from Women's Week to Women's Month. And um, essentially agencies, whether private or public government NGOs, they have the opportunity to select their awardee. There is, we don't have a set criteria per se, mm -hmm. but it's left up to the agency to see who they want to award. And you don't have to award somebody from your own agency. Mm -hmm. Traditionally over the years, we noticed that if an agency is doing an award, they tend to award their own people. Mm -hmm. We try to shift and to try to encourage agencies to so look, look around the community. There are outstanding women in every facet, mm -hmm. but that's, that's how it's been. And so there are women who have been awarded for women who have success, may not have been somebody who entered the world of work, but have raised maybe Six, seven, ten children successfully have done a lot for their communities, maybe their church, and the agencies feel like they're worthy of an award. So th there's a mixed bag because <coughs> we have some women that you've never heard of, yeah. and, and that is good in a sense. Yeah. And then um, this year, the um, Tracy Tega Panton yeah. is being awarded. Yeah. 
And so there's one end of the spectrum to the other end of the spectrum. But essentially, it goes back to women having done something to improve the lives and circumstances of yeah. not only themselves, usually not themselves, yeah. but other people. Yeah. And so there are like 20, 14 women being awarded mm -hmm. on the 28th of March. Okay. And it's known as the Outstanding Women's Award. That's right. And, but that is only one... That is only one of the activities yeah. for the month. There's lots of yeah. other activities. And if yeah. you allow me, today, which is International <coughs> Women's Day, March 8th, when I leave here, I go to a seminar talking uh -huh. about the women's movement and gender equality. And that seminar is being hosted by Petal and by Power. Mm -hmm. Tonight at Wesley Church Lawn, there's a first of its kind event. And I'm happy to be a part of that event along mm -hmm. with three other women. Um, we've looked at the situation where women over the years in Belize and around the world mm -hmm. have literally built the church from, from the ground up. They've done so many activities to support the church, actually the lifeblood of the church. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of the church at the top happens to be very patriarchal, mm -hmm. they're not given the recognition some, most times. And so we took a look at um, the women, eight women, mm -hmm. eight for International Women's Day, who've moved Wesley Church. And um, not, not a woman who has worked tirelessly in one area, but somebody that's multi-skilled, multifaceted. Mm -hmm. And tonight, it's a pictorial exhibition looking at the eight women, five of them posthumously, and three of them who are still with us. Mm -hmm. And it's an opportunity for not only members of the congregation, but for people who come to know the history of the church, yeah. know what these women have been doing. Because like, like Belize on a whole, we're not good at keeping our history. Mm -hmm. So I went on a research tirade uh -huh. to find out a lot of what these women were doing. Yeah. And tonight is opening night. The exhibition is on at 7 at Wesley Church Lawn, and it's a public event. It's so. a great opportunity, of course, uh, for other churches to be able <laughs> to try to do as well. And I think it's, it's um, going back and linking it with the awards uh, that are given out each year. It's looking at what are typically called unsung heroes, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they contribute in a way that perhaps we don't pay attention to, um, even if they are well-known leaders in mm -hmm. a community, we don't pay attention to how they contribute or how they inspire. And I want to talk to Aisha uh, for a bit, just to be able to find out what your reaction was uh, when you found out you were nominated and subsequently uh, chosen as an awardee. I am still a bit speechless on that. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it came as a full surprise. Yeah. I like, had the question like, really? Really? I mean, I've been active. I've yeah. been active. You're a very for young. Very, you're a very young lady. You're yes. twenty. I will be twenty six on the twenty fifth okay, of March. Okay. Yes. So, but I've been involved in um, advocating for children's rights and other issues surrounding children from about started four, which gives me about eleven, I think. Yeah. Over a decade. So, so it's been a long time, but I didn't think that my work that I was doing was that impacting to have been recognized. I mean, I thought that I was working towards that, but not yeah. yet. That's mm -hmm. why I entered the um, social work program at UB, I'm currently an associate mm -hmm. student. I want to see change. I want to see change in our country. Mm -hmm. And the only way for us to see that change is if we start from within. So I started with myself mm -hmm. and then Hopefully, I will be able to assist clients to improve their social functioning and so forth. And I am very thankful to the Women's Department and the other um, organizations for selecting me for this award. Yeah. Now, Aisha, what is it like being a young woman in Belize who is well acquainted with her rights, works to uh, advocate on behalf of other vulnerable populations, what is it like for you functioning in the society as it is now? Is it frustrating? Is it encouraging? Are you it's, inspired for future change? It's frustrating, but it's also my motivation. Hmm. Because, like I said, we need to do better, and in order to do better, we have to go through the, what, what, what do you call it? The, 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 the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or the swamps, or we have to. Or learn to choose our battles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, if we don't, 
go in head first, you'll never know. You can't just stand on the lines and expect to see change. You have to mm -hmm. approach the war. Yes. It begins with us. Now, we know you're a very outspoken <laughs> young lady. And uh, this tends to be something that, uh, as advocates, as women, not everybody is very appreciative of. I think we all around here can understand that. Fortunately, there's no male perspective this morning. <laughs> for that. But how do you use that as a part of your skill set, understanding that it isn't something that is as widely accepted as you'd like it to be? I absolutely paid no mind. Mm -hmm. I trample on many, many, mm -hmm. many people personality and um, I would say not, not 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 let me not say it like that um, I know it's not well accepted mm -hmm. but I don't let that deter me yeah. I it's to me mm -hmm. mm. Anna can you tell us a little bit more about the other awardees the kind of women that we can expect to see at the ceremony um, mm, there's a lot there <laughs> Make <Maybe. laughs> a bit yeah but um, you have for different areas, right? Right. Yeah, right, right. I, I think when I worked through it, um, I looked at it. There were some women that were that were advocates um, mm -hmm. with the Belize Family Life Association. Um, there were some. There were women that. Um, there was one woman um, in Carmelita mm -hmm. where, as I say, it was not something extraordinary that we would think, but yeah. she was a great community advocate. Um, she took in children. And, and fed them when they were hungry. Um, she did a lot of um, home, not, not homeschooling, but a lot of <coughs> socializing with, with, with some of the children in the evening, being that, that, that mother figure to yeah. them. So, so simple things like that, but it means a lot, and it's yeah. a great contribution as well. Mm -hmm. um, I can remember some of them, <laughs> all of them. But they represent mm -hmm. all different yeah. uh, areas in the country. Education, yeah. 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 Things like that. All different areas, but I'd mm -hmm. like to think about it as women from all different walks of life with different circumstances because yeah. um, it's it's also timely to understand too and to appreciate that as women we're not a homogeneous group we 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 want different things we we appreciate <laughs> different things and that's important for that space to have yeah. a whole range of women who do different things because we all need each other to continue not only in the world, but to continue to fight. Yeah. Imagine if all of us were engineers yeah. mm -hmm. or, or lawyers, mm -hmm. how would we really develop the country? You yeah. know? Everybody, and, and, and I think that's such an important uh, part of the conversation, you're so right. Uh, and, and women have different strategies of how to get ahead. Uh, they have different motivations as to what they want. Some women want to be the best mothers they can possibly be, and there's mm -hmm. absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, I want to talk just very briefly. Uh, we spoke about economic empowerment, and I think this is a very important conversation that we don't speak about enough. Um, when we hear women's rights, we hear unemployment issues, or employment issues, I should say. Uh, we hear about uh, what is called the pay gap. We hear about the level of education versus uh, employability and where they're placed in the first place are these issues that we are seeing in Belize and how much do we have the statistics to be able to to really paint the picture as to what Belizean women face in this country well in terms of the statistics for the pay gap I know we don't have that but mm -hmm. um, I, I will be the first to say that um, Yes, while, while government has a pay scale and it tends to be more fair and more partial, there's lots of private organizations where men still get paid more than women. Mm -hmm. And um, those things a lot of time don't rear their ugly head right up front because yeah. sometimes you don't know. Yeah. But it's, it's a situation whereby we have to work toward paying women and men same, the same pay for equal value for equal value for, for the work that they do. Yeah. And that is the important thing. Yeah. Because it shouldn't matter if you're an engineer and you're a woman and I'm an engineer and I'm a man. If we're at the same level, then yeah. we should take home the same amount of pay. Yeah. But historically, and a lot of these things are, like I said before, very systemic. Mm -hmm. Because um, in the past, when Let's look at the teaching profession. When it used to be populated by men, the, the, 
the men, there was a different level, a different standard for pay mm -hmm. than for women. And now, now that the population is mostly women and you hardly find men, it's, it's, it's almost denigrated to a level whereby, well, this is what you get and there's no issue there. Mm -hmm. But whenever men comes into the situation, then there's an inequity. Mm -hmm. you know. I think, and okay. just, just to couple it with the, I, I, I think when, we, and I've opened the segment saying that we've made achievements and we still have areas that we're working on. One of the achievements which still has to be, uh, has to be leveled out is the education aspect. It's wonderful that we have so many women graduating mm -hmm. from our national university. Mm -hmm. um, but what, how does that translate into their introduction into the workforce and why do we still see we still have pockets where unemploy uh, the unemployment rates for women are higher uh, than for men and especially of the younger group well essentially to let's let's look at schools and, and and tertiary level institutions a lot of the women are not encouraged to go into the tech jobs or the tech fields. We, we don't have, Belize is not a place with a huge tech field, but if we look at issues of STEM and we look at mm -hmm. health areas, women should be allowed to go into public service, um, modern agriculture, all the different areas that have been traditionally looked at as mm -hmm. being male dominated. That too will bring people to a, a different starting salary per se. Yeah. If, if you look at situations where where women have been traditionally in like nursing and teaching and so <laughs> those are always the areas where you hear oh you know we need more pay we need to put up our salary we need for this and we need for that but um it's 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 because we haven't talked about these things and haven't put policies in place over the years yeah. to ensure that there is parity that we need to close the gaps. And so just talking about it is an opportunity. Yeah. I need to add that the Commission and Status of Women's Meeting, which is the highest intergovernmental global body for gender equality and women's empowerment, that body meets at the United Nations from the 13th to 24th of March. Mm -hmm. And that meeting is premised on women's economic empowerment. So it's being looked at globally. And um, that Commission is a functioning commission of the United Nations Economic and Social Council, starting way back in 1946. And usually what comes out of the United Nations comes from CSW. Mm -hmm. So it's an excellent starting point to zero in to see how we do over the next few years, over the next decade. Yeah. Because 22 years after Beijing will be August. 22 years. We're still looking at the same issues yeah. of equality, development, and peace, just drawn out differently yeah. and drawn out into first, first the MDGs and now the SDGs. Yeah. And so the issues still remain relevant after 22 years. Yeah. So although we're making progress, those strides are a bit slow. And I, I don't want, I'm, I'm sure the expectation a lot of times when you're going to talk about women's rights is to look at the situation of domestic violence and uh, being able to see it's justice. an issue mm -hmm. it is still and continues mm -hmm. to be an issue so while we didn't still. make it the full focus mm -hmm. because I think people just automatically gravitate to women's yeah. rights and women's protections mm -hmm. protection in that way um, we do have to discuss it and I want to point out that there was a, a, a I'm sure you're aware the um, group of persons who went to the court to in protest to talk about uh, equality and justice mm -hmm. and uh, speaking <coughs> out on behalf of women uh, who have come in contact with the judicial system. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk about what that represents in terms of having a small group of activists come out, but also rate sounding the alarm on uh, the situation of women when they come in conflict with the law and especially how it ties in with domestic yes. violence. And well, <coughs> well, just like you said, um, sometimes as women or as men and members of the society, we don't think about these things until it hits us over the head. Mm -hmm. um, I was saying to a woman two weeks ago that um, women have a disproportionate access to justice in Belize. Mm -hmm. Belize is not different than a lot of the other countries, but this is our Belize. Yeah. And um, 
we need to do all we can. We need to do some heavy activism because the situation has to change. We're talking that, that um, legal aid is no longer legal aid. It's the Advisory Legal Services Center and yeah. you have to pay. And it's difficult for a woman <coughs> who might live in San Benito Poite to come <coughs> down, take the bus, maybe it's her last $40, and come and then you go to legal aid and then you hear, oh, I need $800 for a divorce. And the Attorney General was just speaking the other day saying that, why is it so hard to get a divorce? But these are some of the issues that plague women disproportionately. Yeah and some of the things that we have to look at and we have to be more intentional, especially around this time. So it's like a, International Women's Day is like a clarion call to look at the issues yeah. that still plague us yeah. and to see how we can make real change. Uh, I want to speak a little, a, little, a little bit about the, the, the more personal aspect of it, the whole issues that affect women in Belize, because I think for a lot of women, confidence is a huge issue. You're taught to be quiet. You're taught to do stay in your lane. That's very common. And I see that in a lot of young girls, especially they're so shy. It's painstaking for them to even have a conversation in public. In terms of the, the tenants of the, of the Planet 5050, what are the social uh, issues that are being developed within countries to promote that sense of yes i am i am i'm here i am a woman it doesn't it's regardless I yeah i have a space because i think for a lot of people when they look at feminism they see it as oh i'm a woman so i'm better than ever and that's not the case it's exactly this it's 50 50 seeing both genders as being equal but how do you promote that in societies where that has not been the norm for for how do we time in memorial yeah, yeah. It's I'm glad you raised that because um, people, people, a lot of people feel like young women know how to be a woman. Yeah. And essentially, you're not taught. Can I say that? It's, it's just like a young man not taught to be a man. I remember having this book at 14 on becoming a woman and speak, speak about the same self-esteem issues and all yeah. these things. But we do ourselves a disservice in Belize because there is the HFLE curriculum, which provides the space and the opportunity mm -hmm. for a lot of leadership and self-esteem building. And I can say firsthand, mm -hmm. it's not been done in our primary schools. And isn't that the training ground yeah. for these young women and young boys, particularly young women, mm -hmm. to find their voice, yeah. Yeah. come up through high school, yeah. and then you go on to tertiary level. Tertiary level is not the time for you to try to introduce them to say your name and don't look down yeah. and speak up and yeah. have a firm handshake. No, it's already entrenched them to be quiet and, and don't be too smart because the boys won't like you. Well, yeah. you know what? We need smart boys to like the smart girls yeah. because we won't keep quiet. It's and we need true. smart girls, period. Right? <laughs> <Of course. laughs> but I'm also saying that I remember yeah. that vividly, right? And I remember, I remember my mother saying to me, don't try to dumb dumb because you know but how many of our parents raise us that and way exactly and I, and I wanted to get to the issue and I love that Jamie brought it up I thought I think we have spoken and we we continue as much as possible we have conversations even with Kumpar when you're working with young babies about how we socialize girls mm -hmm. and I love the campaign about banning the word bossy and from mm -hmm. the first time I heard mm -hmm. it I said that's it you know, when have I ever heard a man being called bossy? The whole yeah. issue is Sheryl Sandberg. Yeah. Yes. Never. But you know what? But, wim but women, young girls, yeah. little girls, from the time they discover their first uh, yeah. uh, voice, mm -hmm. they're called bossy. The first plane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know what, too? There's a flip side to that also. Because we teach them that bossy is bad. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You could own it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> or she's stubborn, or she's gonna be mm -hmm. trouble because she doesn't listen, or because herself. she knows what she's, she wants. She's aggressive, yes. you know. She's aggressive and upstart, yes. yes. And the man is assertive and confident, yeah. yeah. You know? Or yeah, he's he's being yeah. more manly. And we're talking but, at two years. But old. we do it to ourselves <laughs> because if you ever say. listen to a conversation with a woman, mm -hmm. if you ever listen to, especially old women, old women are like old men and sometimes worse. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Studies show you that. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're, so, they're ultra traditional. It's mm -hmm. not traditional, they're ultra traditional. And few among us, whenever I find a woman in her 60s and 70s, 
who would dare to engage me and is progressive, she's my friend. Yeah. Because they're few and far between, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And we listen to a conversation with women mm -hmm. and it's up to us to say, listen, mm -hmm. she's not bossy, she's not this. But we engage in those conversations. Mm -hmm. I can't stand she because she yeah. just like, yeah. she just take over. Yeah. She just, you know, mm -hmm. why should some of us squeeze and diminish ourselves yeah. to have other people mm -hmm. yeah. flourish mm -hmm. you know and personality it's it's a wonderful thing but yeah. it's a hell of a thing but it's up to us yeah. to try to develop those things in our girls yeah. how, we are responsible and as a young parent i know yeah. these are things that uh, let, let's <laughs> hear gonna, from you yeah because okay. you are smiling throughout <laughs> this conversation i have a little bit of history with aisha are as you a agreeing child, with so me i know <laughs> She was always I called a little bit bossy because um, she was so assertive. I'm still called a little oh, bit yeah. boss, <laughs> bossy and upstart and the list goes on. Yeah. But I think we have to start with our girls. We, we, we were raised in a time where we should be seen and not heard. That has to stop. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can teach our little girls to say how they feel just in a respectful Respect. way, the way we do it. Yeah. That doesn't mean that they can't say or do what they need to or what they have they can my daughter my daughter she's a miniature version of me already so we start there we start there but yeah. i mean with the challenges i face i think i will be better able to help her face through that period when she hits school yeah. and her adolescent years when people start to think of her the way they think of me yeah Bossy, upstart. People can't handle aggression, and I don't see. Um, it's, yeah. I, I don't think it's aggression. I mean, if I choose not to just sit there and accept what's going on, mm -hmm. I won't go for it. Yeah. If you can't deal with it. Yeah. So how do we leave women with a message of empowerment today on International Women's Day? Well. It begins with all of us. Mm -hmm. It's like peace. We, we, mm -hmm. we give peace a chance because we make a decision. Yeah. Today, it's, it's up to us to say that we can start <laughs> in our homes. I think that's an important training ground. Yeah. Parents are teachers. What we do in our homes, we do in the schools. And it spills over in a world of work. <coughs> Today, if you have three girls and three boys or whatever among the children you have, boys and girls, make a conscious effort that you will encourage your girls to be just as active in areas where the boys are and vice versa. It's not to leave the boys behind, but girls, the boys must not benefit at the expense of the girls. Yeah. So in other words, I, I know of places where boys would sleep in a different room and girls would sleep in their own room and the sisters would have to make the bed for the boys. That is, that is beyond me. And parents don't realize how these things are being institutionalized. Yeah. They do it at home and they think it's okay. Then when their girl child cannot function in the world of work or go out and find boys that are very aggressive and she doesn't know what to do, the mother would never trace that directly back to her. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. in school, we have teachers, be it male or female. Sadly, we don't have a lot of male teachers today. But the boys and the girls, give them equal opportunity yeah. to pursue the things that they want to pursue. Yeah. Don't you, at the the, same you, level. Yeah. you sit down. Yeah. I thought I hear from you. Yeah. Let's hear from the boy. Without any reasoning and thinking that yeah. these things are being passed on. Yeah. What do they mean? Yeah. You know? And in the world of work too. Give equal opportunity wherever you can. Give, provide the space for women and men to breathe. Yeah. You know, and encourage women along the way because we socialize our children differently. Yeah. And especially if we look at, say, political participation, women are not socialized for politics. Mm -hmm. So you really need to do these things early yeah. for them to find their voice yeah. and move on. And how we speak and treat female political leaders is also a message that is being heard by our children as well <laughs> certainly um, and can affect can affect uh, how mm -hmm. we will see leadership mm -hmm. increase or, or stagnate or not see um, right yeah. 
right. as, as time progresses. I think that's a great point. Let's just leave with one thing uh, in celebration of International Women's Day from each one of you about what you celebrate on Women's Day, about being a woman. Let's start with you, Aisha. Put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Did give me any time to think. <laughs> that's all right. Um, what I celebrate for Women's Day? Well, we celebrate women, celebrate being a woman. That's, I'm glad I'm not a boy, not to say it in any <laughs> way, but um, <coughs> this, <laughs> this Women's Day, um, I want to see women starting to pour each other. Stop, they start to defend each other. Stop mm -hmm. bullying each other. Really, yeah. Facebook, mm -hmm. Facebook puts us in a world of Drama. horrors. Yeah. <laughs> but um, let's like start that. there. Let's start to defend each other instead of tearing down each other. Yeah. Um, I think for me, it, it's having women understand and recognize who they are mm -hmm. and, and celebrating who they are and, and their achievements, no matter how small it is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and simply saying, just being a mother to your children and being a good mother and a good role model, mm -hmm. that says a lot because you instill in your children the good mm -hmm. and then that then carries on. So I think just, just recognizing who you are. Yeah. Well, along the same vein, um, I'm a big advocate for supporting women and it doesn't matter where they are or who they are because we will achieve but we will not achieve single-handedly mm -hmm. because all our efforts will be in vain. We have to go and go together and so if we learn to support one another and move on together we will get there mm -hmm. together. So my thing is more togetherness and there is spaces for our togetherness yes. no matter how different we are. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for this conversation today. I'm sure as the month progresses, we'll have continued conversation about celebrating women during this month. But it is International Women's Day, and we're grateful that you were here to share some perspective. We're and grateful that you. you had us. <laughs> Thank All right. you. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we'll be introducing a specialist, Dr. Constanza, talking about pediatric and neonatology services offered in Belize. So stay tuned.